Bless the Lord. Let's see how this works. Tell me if the sound is good now, please. Let me know if the sound is okay. Are we clear? <laughs> now you know that something major is about to happen tonight, all right? The fact that this is happening, this, oh my God, I love it. Thank you, Ned. You love my shirt, huh? <laughs> the Lord bless you. Please go ahead, invite other followers. I do apologize for what happened a few moments ago. All right, forgive me. Uh, but I'm all right. Hey, Jeannie, good to see you, darling. Good to see you, my daughter. Bless you. Am I good? Am I okay? Miss Koja, great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello, Debbie McDougall. Bless you. Please ensure you invite other people tonight because we are getting as deep as we can ever be. Good to see you, Mary, baby. Glory to God. Good to see you. Hello, to see. good to see you. Good to see all of you. The Lord bless you. If you do not invite persons you're new to this, you simply, if it's an Android device, you go from bottom up, swipe your finger up. It helps you, tells you to share the broadcast. You share with all of your followers. An Apple device, you go left to right, and it advises you to share as well. All right? Now, if you are the only person, you have no one to share with, but that's all right. <laughs> Blessings to you, Vandalis Kisa. Good to see you. Good to see you. Are we ready? I've already saw the Lord, so... Good night, Minister Marissa. Good to see you. Good, uh, uh, good. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Tonight, this is all about us knowing exactly what the scripture has to say. All right? Regarding this matter of divorce among the saints. It's important because persons have a, a difficulty, I realize... Mama Rosie, good to see you. Persons have a difficulty dealing with what is absolutely the truth. I've come to realize that. Persons have a great challenge even in the church in dealing with, with what is actually the truth. Okay? Uh, no, I'm not. Persons have a difficulty dealing with what is the truth. We're going to establish some parameters tonight. So as persons come in, some of you may be able to type to remind them of what those parameters are. One, we are sticking to the topic at hand. We are sticking to the topic at hand. The matter at hand is... Good night, uh, Sister Najina. Good to see you. The, the topic at hand is, is, on, is on the scope. It's right there. So before persons join, they have a chance to see what is written and what we're talking about. I'm speaking to those who say they are spirit-filled believers. That's what we're talking about. We're dealing with those who are spirit Filled who say they are by their confession. I am baptized with Holy Spirit. You, you, all of those uh, terminologies. Okay. Uh, we would stick to that. If someone comes and they are not prepared to stick to the matter at hand. They shall be a distraction to those of you who want to stick to the matter at hand. As a result of that I shall remove them from the broadcast. So they will not be a distraction. And, and an, because some people come to Periscope because they really need attention. And that's the truth. They, they are desperately in need of attention. And because they're attention seekers, I've learned that you don't give it to them. I'm dealing with spirit-filled believers by their confession. I'm dealing with those who are in the church, but who may not know the truth. Because they may have submitted themselves to doctrines that are not really of God. And that is my assignment, to speak to you, the body. My assignment is not to speak to those who are not in, unless I'm doing an evangelical mission. But for as long as I'm speaking to the church uh, in an apostolic capacity, I understand exactly what my assignment is. And tonight is so critical, I shall not be distracted. It's not going to happen. The next thing we're going to establish is that what the Lord has said in his written word, in his logos, in his word, that is what we shall abide by. If we have an issue abiding by what is written, then that's a sign that you're not filled by the Spirit of God. Because spirit-filled people are attracted to the truth, they desire the truth, even if they are uncomfortable because of what they would have heard. Truth brings freedom. Truth brings deliverance. Truth will cause you to understand that this is the mind of the Lord regarding us, his people. If we have that agreement, we can begin to speak tonight. But I want it to be clear. So I'm not going to be all around the place answering all manner of questions. 
Good. Let's do it. Malachi, Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. This is a prophet writing. What amazes me is this. Let me begin by telling you this. Persons normally use or most of what they know about the book of Malachi, this prophet, is bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. <laughs> That's all they know. That's the most they could talk about. Bring the tithe to the storehouse. How did a man rob God? You rob him in tithe and offering. That's the most that they know regarding Malachi. Am I freezing? Am I good? Okay. I really don't want us to miss this tonight. The most persons know about Malachi is to bring the money into the storehouse and uh, how can a man rob, rob God? You rob me by tithe and offering. That's as much as people know about Malachi. But Malachi said what I consider to be one of the most powerful statements about God's feelings towards divorce. This very prophet who persons try to use to say the Lord says that my, my, my vineyard, my figs will not, my, my grape vines will not lose uh, uh, its, its grapes and I will not suffer and he rebuked the devourer for my sake. And we pray all these things in Malachi. But when we are about to look now at what the Lord said to the same prophet, we are cautious and sometimes persons don't like what he said, but it's the same God who said that your, your barns will always overflow and you'll have all these great things. And he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Is the very God that spoke to Malachi about marriage. Malachi chapter 2. The Lord says in verse 11, Malachi 2, 11, Judah has dealt treacherously and has done an abomination in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holy place of Jehovah, Jehovah, which he loves and married a daughter of a foreign god. That's adultery. Idolatry is equivalent to adultery. Idolatry is the same as adultery because the Lord is spirit. And if he is married to us in covenant, if ever someone goes after another God, that person is committing adultery. It's called idolatry, but it's tantamount or it's equivalent to adultery between a man and a woman. Thank you. Thank you, Medelli. All right. Let me, let me get it clear for you tonight. Idolatry is if you look at the word adultery in the original meaning of the word in the original language, Hebrew, the original language in Greek, it has one of the meanings to be idolatry as well. Because Revelation talk about it. The adulterous churches and, and things of that nature. Whenever we seek after foreign gods, Malachi 2 verse 11. Now we're at verse 12. It may be good for you to get a Bible. You may need a scripture tonight because I really want you to see exactly what is being said. Jehovah will cut off from the tents of Jacob the man who does it, stirring and answering or offering a food offering to Jehovah of hosts. Verse 13. Verse 13. And this is the second thing that you've done. The second thing. Second thing that you've done. Covering the altar of Jehovah with tears and weeping. Watch this. The second thing the Lord said is, you are covering my altar with tears and weeping. Now that sounds like a good thing to me. Sounds good, doesn't it? You're covering the altar with, with tears and, and weeping and groaning yet not facing toward the food offering and taking it with delight from your land God said I'm not doing that you're groaning and all that but God says I'm going to deal with you now look at verse 14 yet you say on what cause or why did it happen because Jehovah has been witness between you and the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously. 
Oh my God. And she is your companion and your covenant wife. And has he not made you one? This is the Lord speaking. He said you're crying and you, 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 you're, you're lamenting at the altar. You're crying. You're crying and you're weeping. And then you said, why is God not accepting what I'm offering him? And the Lord said, because you have dealt treacherously, mister, with the wife of your youth. Peter said it. Peter said, honor your wife as the weaker vessel and deal with her according to understanding or knowledge because your prayers shall be cut off. The same Lord who spoke to Peter spoke to Malachi and said, based on how my people handle their wives, my men, I shall not even hear you. Now, Mr. Preacher, Mr. Prophet, Evangelist, all these different titles you have, Bishop and all the rest of you are there. If you do not handle your wife according to godly standards, God says, I am not going to accept anything you offer me, neither will I even hear you. That's scripture. He said, I'm not impressed by your weeping and your groaning at the altar. That does not impress me. I'm dealing with how you handle your wife, the wife of your youth, your covenant wife. You promised her that you shall love her, you shall, you shall cherish, you shall be the man of her dreams, you shall take care of her. And now you saw somebody else, and because you committed adultery with that person, you now have, you're treating your wife badly and want to go somewhere else. In the church, the Lord says, I am not going to hear you. So you could fast as much as you want to fast. You could pray as much as you want to pray. If you are not praying repentance and returning to your wife of your youth, God is not going to hear you. Therefore, you shall mount the pulpit and you shall preach messages that will be doctrines of devils or you shall just be a vessel through whom God speaks to his people. But on that day, he will say, I have never known you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Why? Because you've dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. It is that serious tonight. You as a man, let me speak to the men first in, in this broadcast. As a man, you are never supposed to take a young woman. Promise her that you're going to be faithful, you're going to love her, you're going to be a man in the church I'm talking about. I'm talking to the church. I'm speaking to the church. You're not supposed to do all of that. And after she comes in, given your promises, you turn to somebody else because of your lustful ways. Then, hello, my brother Steve. Good to see you tonight. I hope you help me out in this broadcast. It's going to get hard in a minute. You are not supposed to, never supposed to as a man who claims to have the spirit of God in you. You are never supposed to promise a woman Take her to live with her. Then go sleeping around the place with other people. After that, after that, you say, God said you must marry the other woman you committed adultery with. Why didn't God tell Israel, therefore, to marry the other gods? He said, I'm not going to hear you. I'm not going to receive any offering from you. Why? Because you've dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. My brother Steve Branham, we are in Malachi chapter 2. The Lord is not confused indeed. He said, I've made you one. Yet the vestige of the spirit is in him. And of what? The one? He, or why did he cause them to be one? He said, I was seeking a seed of God. May I speak to the church tonight? Why does God or did God institute marriage? For him to have godly seed in the earth. Malachi said it because the Lord told him that. Malachi 2, we know in verse number 15. Thank you, Pastor Mel, 15. He said, I want, I would like to have godly seed in the earth. Therefore, for there to be godly seed in the earth, you must have a godly father and a godly mother. Because two good trees shall surely produce good fruit. That was the plan. Hence, and we get there in, in, in the broadcast, hence in 1 Corinthians Paul said, the sanctified one must sanctify the unsanctified one. Or your children shall be called bastards. But they are not. The scripture says they are holy. Why? Because a parent who is sanctified. I first of all tell you please, 
please let me tell you tonight, do not look at your selfish desires. Consider the fact that your children must have a particular name in God's vocabulary, which is holy. They must be defined as holy. And because they must be defined as holy or clean people, the parent must understand the power of sanctification. If you cannot live a different or a set apart life or a consecrated life unto God, you, you are affecting the definition of your children. We are not supposed to be so selfish that our generation has a different description because we cannot control ourselves. That is not supposed to happen. A father in the Lord who is serious about his, gene, his, his, his legacy, serious about his generation, he shall ensure that he leads the life that is righteous before God, that is pleasing unto the Lord. So even if his wife goes off course, even if his wife goes off course, the sanctified man shall stand in the house of the Lord and he shall stand in his house and ensure that his children are called holy because he remains sanctified. Too many men in our churches are looking to the women to stand while they are hiding around, the, running all over the place thinking that this is some game you're in. And that God doesn't, God spoke to the man in Malachi. He spoke to the husband in Malachi. He spoke to the man in Malachi. He said, you have to handle your wife correctly or I'm not going to receive your offering. But where are the preachers who say that when you give God offerings to them, the Lord will do all these things for you. He will not ever do anything for you if you did treacherously with the wife of your youth. Verse number 16, Jehovah the God of Israel says he hates divorce. Malachi 2.16, Jehovah, Jehovah the God of Israel said he hates divorce. He hates it. He hates it. Why? Because it covers with violence on his garment. It covers a man with violence, says Jehovah of hosts. Then guard your spirit and do not act treacherously. You have wearied Jehovah with your words. Yet you say, in what way have I wearied him? Hear me carefully now. He said, when you say, when you say, every evildoer is good in the eyes of Jehovah, and he delights in them, or where is the God of justice? Whenever we call evil good, the Lord says, I'm wearied with your talking. If you cannot speak righteousness, God says, you would not imp I'm not, I don't even want to hear you. You're wearying me because you're speaking all kinds of, of, of uh, empty words. They sound good, but there's no potency to them because we are calling what is evil good. The Lord does not delight. The Lord does not delight in his children walking away from each other. And I said it to you in the last broadcast that only adultery will sever the connection. Why? Because adultery is the same as idolatry in God's eyes. He said, Judah, you committed adultery. Now Christ, 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 our master, the Lord, Yeshua was speaking to, his, to the people asked him in Matthew chapter 19, Matthew 19. They said, can a man put away his wife for any reason? He said, no, 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 no. Have you not read? From the beginning it was not so. He made them male and female. Didn't you read that? He made them male and female. Didn't you read that? And he said, for this reason shall a man leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife. Hear me carefully, please. The two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Verse 7, then they said to him, did Moses say you could give somebody a bill of divorcement? And put her away, he said to them, in the view of your hard-heartedness, because he was stubborn and hard-hearted, Moses was permitted to do so. Moses allowed you to do it. That's what the Lord said. But from the beginning, it was not so. It was not so. And I say to you, whoever shall put away his wife, if not for fornication, see it again, see it again, which is sexual immorality. 
and shall marry another, the one commits adultery. And the one who marries her, who was put away, commits adultery. Now look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. His disciples said to him, If the case of a man be so with his wife, it is good not to marry. That's what the disciples said. But he said to them, Not all could receive this. Oh my God, everybody cannot receive this. He said everybody can't take that. For some are eunuchs who were born from the mother's womb, and others were made eunuchs for the gospel's sake. Oh, I want to look at this one here. He said, who could, who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Do you hear me? Who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Bless you, Brother Steve, that's confirmation. One spirit. Who could receive it, receive it. My question tonight is, indeed, my brother, where are the kingdom eunuchs? Where are the people who could stand and say, Lord, I have been divorced or my wife has left me or I've never been married. I want to stand and I want to show the world that you are a keeper. Where are you? Why do we sing what we cannot live? Why? Why do we utter from our lips that the Lord is all we need and we can't live that? Let me begin early in this broadcast to tell you, I have promised myself that if ever, and it would not happen, but if that could have ever happened and my wife should leave me, I will never be married again. So since you, if you attempted to ask me the question, I've answered you tonight. If my wife is to ever let the, the enemy get in her head and, and she walks away from me, I will never marry again. Not as long as she lives. Why? Because I've been taken to a place with my father, the Lord Almighty, that no woman in this world could ever, if my wife leaves me, get my attention. I'll commit my life. And you have this, I put this on YouTube to be there forever. I'll commit my life. It's hard. It's very hard, my brother Steve. I'll commit my life to showing that the Lord is able to keep me as I preach his gospel. Why must I have a spirit who keeps me from everything, but I'm incapable of being kept under control? If my wife leaves me and goes to marry another man, I'm not going to marry another woman. My desire is to stand as a vessel who is different. That's what the word holy means. And I'll show you why in the broadcast in a few minutes. I'll show you why in the broadcast. Somebody get it already. J Yeshua said, whoever could receive this, receive it. You know why he said that? Because everyone cannot receive that. Everyone cannot receive that. Oh my God, cut to the, oh my God, my brother is on. Bless you, my brother LeBron. Blessings on you. His book, please find it tonight on Amazon. It's free. Get it. Get the book, prof uh, uh, Prophetic Prophets Notes. Get it, please. My husband left me for another woman. He did. God didn't leave you. The Lord shall never leave you. The Lord shall never leave you. The Lord shall never leave you. Never leave you. The Lord said, whoever could receive it, receive it. Thank you, Brother Steve. Please, uh, uh, Brother LeBron, Prophet LeBron, please, please ensure you get that book. All right? I've downloaded it today already. Now, let me go to the scripture at hand. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If you don't understand this, this, this text, let me help you to understand the function of the disciples or the apostles. The Lord, the Lord was speaking to his 12 apostles and he said, Whom do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 1 Corinthians 7. And we know what happened. Then Peter said, Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Yeshua said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This was revealed by my father who's in heaven. Watch this carefully. Then he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I'll read it in the original language for you, shall be having been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be having already been loose in heaven. Hear me carefully here. 
The word bind is not about binding demons. You don't bind demons. You cast them out. The word bind in, in scripture means, it means this, to declare something to be legal or illegal. Bind means surrender something to be illegal. He said to the 12 apostles, you have the authority because you know the mind of heaven to say this is not right for the church. Therefore, 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 Paul begins 1 Corinthians 7 by saying Paul is an apostle. Watch what he said. Watch what he said. Now concerning the things that you wrote to me. That's what Paul said. Why did they write to Paul? Because they know the function of the apostle. They had a question. In the book of Acts, the same thing happened. Men were saying that you have to be circumcised to be saved. The apostle Paul again was on the scene and he, he contended with them strongly. 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 Paul and Barnabas, they were mad at them. Then what did they say? They said, go to the elders and the other apostles, not your friends. Go to the elders and the other apostles and they will tell us what to do regarding this matter. Peter wrote to them. James wrote to them. Peter said, you are Jews and you can't even keep the law yourselves. Leave the Gentiles alone. Just stay away from sexual immorality and from the blood. And from blood. The apostles brought the question to an end. If wife goes out, why should believing husband suffer? I shall elaborate. A believing husband never suffers. If a wife goes out, if my wife goes out to another man, I don't suffer. The Lord, his spirit is in me. If his spirit is not enough for me, I have a problem. And I'll elaborate in a minute if, if you stay on. So the Apostle Paul had the authority to speak to the church regarding marriage. And he began to speak to them. He said, you wrote to me. You wrote to me. That's correct. Bind says this is legal. Loose means to say you're free from something that would have held you in captivity. For example, the daughter of Abraham was entitled to be healed. Yeshua said you bent over for 18 years. Be loosed from your infirmity. Loose. Be loose from it. He never said loose from the demon. Be free of that infirmity. Because you're a child of Abraham. Why are you suffering? Your right is to be healed. Every time Yeshua dealt with a demon, he said come out of. Come out of. Come out of. Not I bind you. Not I bind you and I loose you. No. Come out of. In my name, they will cast out devils, not bind them. Whatever you try to bind, you keep. Let's get doctrine straight tonight. The Apostle Paul said, The Apostle Paul said, You wrote to me, and I shall respond to your question. He said, It is good for a man to not even touch a woman. The same thing Yeshua said, because Paul knows that marriage is a serious thing. You don't play with this. He knew that if you enter this marriage and you are not prepared to be consecrated and disciplined, you will walk away easily. And when you walk away, he knows that as far as God is concerned, you're bound. If you say he is child, that is. If you're not his child, then do whatever you want to do. I'm speaking to his children tonight. You don't enter this playing games. You don't enter because somebody is pretty or somebody is a good ministry asset to you. She could preach like you so till you get married. Don't do that. Never marry someone because they are good for ministry alone. Ministry is out there. When you get in the house, what happens? Some women could preach well, but they never give their husbands a sexual pleasure. Always have a headache. Always sick. Never want to make love to their husband. Got all kinds of crazy rules. I'm going to deal with you all tonight. I, I told you, I dealt with the men first. Let me talk to you ladies in this periscope broadcast. You didn't get married for your husband to, to be sexually uh, 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 starved? How could you be full of the Holy Ghost and can't make love to your husband? You need deliverance, man. You could never be full of the Spirit of God and watch your husband suffer sexually. Now, I'm going to touch some areas tonight the church may not like, but I'll deal with it. You are never supposed to be full of the spirit of Yeshua and refuse to deal with your husband. Men, I'll deal with you too. I'm coming down your street now, so don't say men too quickly here. I have said to my wife, now please hear me. I have said to my wife, please hear me. I have said to my wife, 
I have said to my wife. Did I say that? Okay. I have asked my wife a favor. I said, baby, do me one favor. Grant me one wish, please. Please. If I ever disrespect you, call you the B word, say that you're a slut, all these kind of evil things, me. If I do that to you, never, if I'm disrespecting you, permit me to go on top of you or else make love and do all kinds of stuff. I said, don't do it. Grant me one favor. You are, your body is the temple of Yeshua. I am not supposed to disrespect and dishonor your body and then come to you as if you're a hooker. I said, do me that favor, please. See, my wife is right there. Sinead is right there. I said, do me that favor, please. If I'm a man of God, never let me call you ill names and then come jumping at you as if I did not marry a prostitute. I married a child of the living God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, whose you are. And if Holy Ghost is in you, and I call you a B word, who did I talk to? You? Not you. I spoke to who's in you as well. Yeshua said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do it to me. So if I call you names, who am I talking to? So I have asked my wife as a man, please, never let me disrespect you. And then come jump in and use if you some toy. I didn't marry her for that. I married a child of God. At the same time, my wife understands that if I am leading a godly life, I'm serving the Lord and I'm, I'm faithful to the Lord, why must you deny me access to your body? What have I done? What have I done? Some wives were trained by some church mothers who are witches. Their marriages are terrible, and they're telling the young women, girl, don't give him how he wanted, don't do that, don't do that. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. Don't turn off and don't have, no, don't let him see you naked. All kinds of foolishness. Don't buy any, any fancy underwear and lingerie, don't do that, don't do that, that's carnal. They have no man. And if they have an old man, he's miserable. Because they can't please their husband. And they're teaching young women to not try to please their man. You don't do that to a man and expect him to be happy and chirpy all day. So if the man is living right and your husband is respecting you, the least you can do is show him that you love him enough to make love to him. You're never supposed to be disrespectful to your wife and jumping all over the place. Don't ever do that. You are not... Worse? Worse. Did I say worse? Worse. If you, mister, who will be viewing this later on YouTube or Facebook, want to go and have sex around the place, it's obvious that your wife is not good enough for you. Because if she's good enough for you, why would you be out? No, you want snack. You like snacks. You want snack on somebody and then come home to eat, eat the main course? No, sir. Sisters don't tolerate it. Tell them Apostle Nigel London said that. Never tolerate your husband sleeping around the place and coming to you. He must have honor and respect for you. I'm talking to the people in the church. I am speaking to the people in the church. He's a preacher. Won't go sleeping all over the place. Then come back to you. So where is that Holy Spirit? Where is that Holy Spirit that he talked in tongues this morning? Said, I have, I have, I have Holy Ghost. She ba 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 What? All the tongues you're talking, sleeping around the place, then come back to her, and she knows what you're doing. She sees what you're doing. Then you go quoting scripture that your body does not belong to you. Read the whole of 1 Corinthians 7. He didn't just say that. At the end of it, he said, your body is the temple of the Lord. Read the whole book. Don't read half. Read all. Your wife's body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If she is full of his spirit, she's owned by him. Don't read half. Too many of you preach quarter. You have no right 
to be having sex or you with sleeping people in the, on the, the singer you sleep with sleep with the dancer in the church you listen here oh god keep my tongue in the church you're doing all manner of foolishness then go home and say wife sub right here see it rc uh, bangaru yeah wife submit they're committing adultery all around the place and tell the wife submit to me give me sex when i want it no you go get it where you've been having it because if you don't want if you want it here you shall respect god's temple here i don't care how you feel i don't mind your opinion on this broadcast tonight you shall respect the women of god they're your sister in the lord they're god's temple they're god's vessels why must men disrespect and dishonor? God said to Malachi, tell the men of Israel, you have disrespected your wives and I'm not receiving your offering. That's who she is, uh, Prophet LeBron. Your sister and brother in the Lord, but he has shut off that system in, of thinking as my, my biological sister. But that's God's child too. That's not your toy. That's God's child. Value her. Love her. As Yeshua loved the church. Marriage was given. Ephesians 6. I think it is. Marriage was given. It's a mystery to show Yeshua and the church. When did Christ go sleeping around on, on his people? Marriage is mysterious because it shows Yeshua and the church. What example are the spirit-filled believers setting for the Lord or for the world to see this is how Christ and his church function? We better repent. I repented. Even when I was battling lust severely, I said, Lord, this does not reflect you. I'm going to deliver, I'm going to free some of you tonight right in this broadcast. I said, you said to me, you spoke to me on the mountain too. You said, if you even desire to have her in your heart, to take somebody, lust after her, you've committed adultery. I said, so therefore, I am guilty of it. Forgive me for it. And because you live in this vessel, by faith, I shall show that you're here. Because I walk by faith, not by sight. I said, by faith, I believe that you filled me with your spirit. Because I believe you filled me with your spirit, by faith I shall do the works to show. Those who commit adultery, how do they stop? They, they crucify their flesh. Confess your faults one to the other. I'm doing it publicly tonight. I said, Lord, forgive me. I confess to my wife. I don't play games with you. I didn't come to play games with you tonight. And then my wife is on the broadcast. Tell him, baby. I fast more than more than what some of you can even imagine because I put my body under subjection. I put my flesh under subjection. Yes. When we got married, I told her. I put my flesh under subjection. My marriage now is as beautiful as they get. Does my wife and I get, do we have prop? Yes, we fuss sometimes and I love it. We fast and in two minutes we're laughing with each other. We're not enemies because we love one another. We understand that this is 18 years of pain, but also of joy. We've been through it. That's why I could speak to you like this tonight. I'm tired of men making excuses in the church. Cut it out. You are just found out my husband was cheating. Can you leave the marriage? Why? Don't be, don't be quick to leave. My question is, can you forgive? Before you ask if you could leave, I'm asking if you can forgive. If your husband prefer pornography, I say it again, I'm talking to those who are in the church. I'm speaking to those in the church. How many times a day did the Lord say you should forgive? I'm speaking to those in the church. I'm talking to those. Re, re, let's, let's go. Let's refer to the topic here. The topic says, what did the topic say? The topic says, uh, 
You, I'm, I am speaking about those who say their spirit failed. That's right. She left. If your husband walks out, the I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. If the husband walks out, if he's unbelieving and he walks out, let him go. You're not, you're not on the bondage. Just, I'm reading it for you in a minute. We'll get to if you leave him, what happens? So Paul said, I'm, 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 I'm. Paul said, I'm writing to you. It's good to not touch a woman. But because of fornication. Because of what? Because of fornication. Because of what? Because of fornication, which is sexual immorality. In the church, let every man have his own wife. Now, I need to give you some history of Corinth here, because if you understand the history of Corinth, you'll understand why Paul wrote this. The Corinthian saints had some crazy thought that those who were spirit-filled and those who were gifted, they felt that they could sleep with the person, have sex, and they'll gain the gift. So Paul said, this, cut this out. Every man must have his wife, 1 Corinthians 7. The Corinthian saints were crazy. They were, okay, let me help you. When Paul wrote the letter to the Corinthian church, you know what he said to them? I cannot speak to you as spiritual. Most people didn't read that. Most people didn't even read that part of Corinthians. Read the first, read the letter carefully, please. Paul said, I can't even talk to you as if you're spiritual. You are carnal. That's what he told the Corinthian church. He said, I am unable to speak to you as if you're spiritual. I have to give you milk. You are carnal. You're driven by reasoning and flesh. That's why he told them what was happening in the He said, you need to stop this. Every man must have his own wife because sexual immorality is in the church. You'll be healed tonight, Deb Life One. You'll be healed, my sister. You'll be healed in this same broadcast. You'll be healed. I pray that you would be. So Paul said, every man must have his own wife. And likewise, wife should also have the husband. Watch this carefully now. Verse 3. Let the husband be or give due kindness to the wife. Die. The Lord is faithful to heal. Wife also give due kindness to the husband. So if he keeps cheating and taking advantage of grace, are you not giving? Anybody who takes advantage of grace does not have salvation. May I say that to you again? Anyone who takes Hebrews chapter 10. If we willingly sin, after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, verse 26, there remains a greater judgment, more terrible judgment than even in the days of the law. He said, for in the days of the law, you were stoned to death by the witness of two or three. But he said, now you have insulted the spirit of grace, therefore there is no more sacrifice to be made for you. You don't insult the spirit of grace, it means to blast him against the Holy Ghost. It's an insult to God's grace. To keep sinning after you've come to the knowledge of the truth. My husband is not safe and I am, and I, and I am so why can't I leave? The, I'll get it to the scripture. I'll get to the scripture. I'll get to the scripture. Sin is not just a transgression of the law. Sin is also doing anything without faith. Read the book of Romans chapter 14. Anything done without faith is sin. Anything. Let's get to the text. So the wife must... Give due benevolence to the husband, husband to the wife. Because the husband's body is not his, neither is the wife's body hers. You must ex that in terms of sexual gratification, not spiritual ownership. Sexual gratification is different from spiritual ownership. God owns the wife's body as his temple. But for sexual pleasure, you are my wife. Don't withhold yourself from me if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm your husband. If you want me, you have to get me. I'm not, I have never told my wife no. Never will I do it. Because this is her body. For sexual pleasure. If I do that, if I, if I disrespect her, and I do not please her, she will find pleasure somewhere else. Either by, her, by, by pornography, or by masturbation. Or some toy. Never, Susan, never have I said no. Never. Oh, glory to God. Never. Hello. PD, good to see you. Good to see you. 
Let's pray for Fatima Muhammad. 25. Let's pray for that sister. I pray for you tonight that the Lord is going to really help you. All right? Some of you, some persons got involved in arranged marriages and their husbands are, are, are doing some terrible stuff. The Lord is going to help you. All right? Isaac from Vancouver. Good to see you. Bless you. All right, let's talk about the book now. Watch this carefully here. Watch this carefully. Do not deprive one another. Do not deprive each other. You should not do that. That's a scriptural instruction. Do not deprive one another. Unless by agreement for a time. All right? I am from a country called Guyana in South America. Brazil is my neighbor. So is Venezuela. For a time. By agreement. I know a pastor that was always cheating on his wife. And his wife forgive. That, a pastor? He needs to be saved. He's lost. And he's a hypocrite. A pastor continuing to cheat on his wife? He said, get back together again in the, on the same place that Satan may not tempt you through your incontinence. You hear through what? Through incontinence. All right, let's go. Verse number six. But I say this by permission. See that? Yeah, I'm giving apostolic instruction as well. I say this by permission. You know what Paul is saying? As an apostle of the Lord, I'm speaking to you based on my apostolic authority to give you instruction and wisdom. Then he said though, this next part, this next part, he said, I desire all men to be as myself. Oh God. But each has his own gift from God and one this way and the other another. So Paul said, all of you can't be like me. All of you cannot do that. Now, this is in the same Bible where you claim all the promises now. All right? Verse number eight. This is important. Verse number eight is critical. Verse number eight is so critical. I'm going to read the interlinear for you, and I'll show you the meaning of words. So we get real deep now. Stay with me here. Let me pull it up on my PC. Verse number eight. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 8. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 8. I say to the unmarried. The word unmarried is the word agamos. Agamos means unmarried. Hear me? The scripture says to the unmarried, that's Strong's Greek 22. You can find it Strong's Greek. Strong's Greek number 22. Okay, we'll talk later. S. Jean, good to see you. All right? Strong's Greek, number 22, the word is agamas. To the unmarried, that word is agamas. It means a person who is not in a state of wedlock. Whether he or she has formally been married or not. So this word unmarried covers those who were once married and also those who've never been married. All right? The word agamas, the unmarried, it's not just a single person who's never been married. It covers both. Paul said to the unmarried, let's see what he said. To the unmarried, <laughs> to the unmarried men and to the widows, it is good for them if they also remain as I am. That's the scripture. So the people who are divorced and full of the Holy Ghost, the scripture says it's good for you to remain as you are. Because marriage brings a lot of issues. He's saved but needs deliverance. I pray that he will be delivered. I hope you get him to watch his broadcast. Or the, or, the, or the YouTube of it. The scripture says. Verse 8. To the unmarried. Which is the word agamus. Agamus. It is better to remain as I am. So if you were divorced. The scripture says it's better to remain as you are. Now, I could tell my sister, I love her so much. I have two sisters on this broadcast tonight. Love them. Love them to bits. Got divorced. I said to one, you will work with me in ministry. You are not getting married again. The Lord showed me her, the, the potency of her being as she is, working for him. I said, you don't need another husband. You would get so close to God. That it would, you wouldn't even need a man. There you are, right there. See, I have right there. And I have watched her commit her life 
entirely to the Lord. Entirely. And the Lord is doing great things. Can you divorce two times and marry again? Somebody is crazy. No, sir. Not if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. If we are full of the Holy Spirit, how in the world could we be divorced twice and going to be married a third time? Full of the Holy Ghost and on husband or wife number three? Something is very, is very wrong with that. Bishops getting married for the third time and nobody could speak against you? Apostles? Apostles? Committing adultery then say, God say to marry the other woman? All right, you know, my, you know what I normally say to those people? You are a joker. You're a hypocrite. You need to repent. No, that's fine, Shanae. I'm, I'm talking not to you. There. Sorry, but I'm not talking to you. Cheyenne, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking generally here. The, uh, the prophets, Cheyenne, and, and, and apostles and all these things in the church, married for three times, twice, and telling me they have the Spirit of God in them, and they're marrying people in the church. Not outside. Bishop speaks the third. Oh yeah. We need a Bynum weeks. Now back to we need a Bynum. Her husband gone marry somebody else. What is happening in the church? Thank you. M. Lutz to, to you. Listen here. God hates divorce. How you and husband number three, or number two, or wife number three, if God hates divorce? And they are all in the church. Well, what they call the church? I'm really not intending to follow these people. And nobody could bring them correction. Listen to my, listen to my issue. My issue is nobody could speak correction to the, to the church. They are stiff-necked. They do not want to be corrected. They will call me an enemy because I'm telling the truth. They will call me their adversary because I'm telling them the truth. Nobody can speak to their wickedness. Paul said to the unmarried, it's better if you stay as you are. That's right, they're walking in unrepentant sin. Glory to God. Thank you, that's correct. Because they're arrogant, and because they're carnal, they can't have one woman. And they will cheat again if they have a chance. I'm saying that to you as cold as ever. They have no self-control. They are stubborn. Then they want to preach that the members should obey them. You can't obey God, why should they obey you? But I'm going to warn some of you sit in those congregations. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Pharisees, they sit in the seat of Moses, Matthew 23. Do what they say because they tell you what the law said. But don't you dare do what they do. Some of these people, if they tell you God loves you, yes, he loved me. But don't follow their behavior. Do not follow their behavior because the Pharisee spirit, they sit in the seat of Moses. They don't exist. They know exactly what the Lord says, but they could never do what the Lord has said. They're perverted indeed, filled with lust. There you are. Filled with lust. Paul said it's better to stay as you are. All right, so let's see what happened next. He said, and if, verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 7, if moreover not they have well, oh god let's look at let's let's let, let, let's look let's look let's look at chapter 7 verse 9 of first corinthians but if they do not have self-control oh my god let them marry so the ones who are unmarried the ones who are unmarried and un, remember what agamus means you could have not been married before or you married or you or you're divorced he said for the lack of self-control let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn with lust. Now, I will, I, will, I will talk to you right here, and I may have to close right here. 
Listen to the statement, uh, Periscope viewers. It is better to marry because they have no self-control. Brother Steve, you got it. You got it. You have it. You've got it. Galatians 5 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, meekness, temperance, patience, self-control. If the press, the scripture said, if they have no self-control, get married. You know why? Because you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. That is why they'll be fighting to be married again. Because they have no self-control. And if they have no self-control, they don't have the fruit of the Holy Ghost. These people have no Holy Spirit in them. They are religious and they are stubborn. It is impossible to have the Holy Ghost fill you up, envelope you, take you all over. And then you say, I have no control. I have to get married. If ever you have to get married, you have no self-control because you tasted marriage before. So, Mr. Apostle, since your wife went and found some other man, you have self-control. You show self-control. And you do not go getting married. Show the world that you're full of Holy Ghost. If you're not full of Holy Ghost, then admit it. I don't have Holy Spirit. And I could live with that. Because you're honest. But do not come to me telling me. You have a lot of questions. Uh, Kim Harrison, find me on Facebook at Nigel London. Look at my, uh, my description on, on, on this scope. And you can ask me any question privately. All right, my wife and I'll be happy to talk to you, even to call you and to speak with you. All right. The scripture says, "The script. I'm not like a child. When you enter the kingdom of God, you're a babe in Christ. Then you grow up to a mature person. You enter the kingdom as a babe in Christ. Then you grow up into maturity. The scripture does not only speak to babes. He said, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word, milk." that you may grow but then paul said i can't give you the corinthian church milk meat i could give you milk because you you are too childish when will we grow up an apostle is not a babe in christ a prophet is not a babe in christ evangelist pastor or teacher are not babes in christ everyone is not there yet that's good i'm talking to those who are there who say they're apostles and won't marry five times Paul said when I was a child, which means I didn't have information. The word child means lack information. He said when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, which is to acquire information, to mature, he said I put away childish things. When will we put away childish things? You are 20 years saved and still a child. You know why? Because you're stubborn and don't want to learn. I'm talking to some of you right in this broadcast. Carnal people can never grow up. Never. As if, a, if a divorced spouse marries and... If a divorced spouse, no. No. According to scripture, according to scripture, the only, listen to the scripture carefully. The scripture said only when you lack self-control. To the agamus, to the unmarried, unmarried means, to the agamus means those who are unmarried. Meaning, 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 those who were once married or those who never married. To the unmarried, it's in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 8. He said to the unmarried, remain as you are. Remain as you are. But, if I miss the question, help me here please. Let me Bring me back on track. To the unmarried person, your husband left. Marry somebody else. You are full of the Holy Ghost. God says stay as you are. Because if you're full of the Holy Spirit, you'll never say, Lord... I have no self-control. Yeshua said, this is a hard saying. Bless you, my brothers. I feel like running myself. I don't have a belief. We're not talking about belief right now. You could never be full. Now, decide here on this Periscope broadcast, what are we? Those of you on Facebook who see this later, who are you? Decide if you ask, if you, if by your words you say, I am full. How about the scripture that said, for fornication you can divorce, but it didn't say you must go get remarried. That's what I'm saying. 
For fornication, they could be divorced, but he never said, go find another person. What the church is doing, the church is saying, oh, he cheated on you? Well, go find another husband. The scripture never said that. The scripture has never said that. I'm here to bring the church into order and for us to understand the scripture. That's why I told you, if you really want to serve the Lord, he said, remain as you are. But if you say, God, I have to get married, good. But know that when you end, and that's why I blame pastors, I blame apostles, I blame bishops. You're supposed to tell the people this. You're supposed to tell the people this. You're supposed to tell them. You will initialize, then you're bound by the law, or you may be part of the remnant. I don't know what you are, my brother. The preachers are supposed to tell you this. They're supposed to say, listen, what you're getting into here, God says you are supposed to stay. If the person commits fornication, you're free to leave them. But you are not going to find another spouse if you're full of the Holy Ghost. Yeshua said, Yeshua said, this is a hard, the disciples said to the Lord, this is a hard thing. If your spouse passed away, you could get married for sure. And even then, I'm not sure if I'll do it. I want to serve, where are those people? I want to be so, so, so engulfed by the presence of Yeshua, of his spirit, that I don't even want to deal with a woman if my wife dies. I want his presence to overtake me so much that all I want to do is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. That's what I want. That's it, my brother. I, I'm not given to natural affection. God, I'm married now, and I love my wife. My daughter on this scope, where is she? Regina. Regina 318, I think it is. Regina, tell them, baby. My baby asked me a question. 22 years, she said, Daddy, Daddy, if God tells you that it's okay to leave mom and find somebody else, will you do it? Daddy, if God tells you it's okay to leave mommy and find somebody else, I said, I will not do that. She said, Daddy, I'm saying to you, just, just suppose that God says it's okay to leave mom and find somebody else. I said, I will not do it. So she was troubled. She said, Dad, why won't you do it? Most men will say yes. I said, let me tell you why. When I married your mom, I got married to my future. I saw her as a part of my future in the Lord working. I did not marry my present. I married my future. I would not walk away from a woman who I know is valuable to me in my future. She's a good mother. She's a woman of grace and virtue. Why must I leave her? Because I just felt God said to do it. I said, I'm not doing that. And I love you so much, baby. I don't even know if I could find another woman if you die. See, right here. I don't have time to play with you and lie and play games with you all tonight. No, she was just saying suppose. Cindy Blackman, she was just saying suppose. All right? God, God cannot... I never said divorce is the sin. Now, they all don't miss the text. You see how people want to get stubborn and say, well, okay then, God can forgive me if I'm divorced? Hello. I'm saying to you, if you say you are full of the Holy Ghost, you are not supposed to leave your spouse and marry somebody else. Or your spouse, even if they leave you, you're not supposed to go marrying somebody else. The scripture never said to do that. That's all I'm saying. Because the scripture said it. Now what would we believe? The scripture, how we feel. Let me tell you what happens to people. I see it a lot in Periscope. If they do not agree with it, they think God did not say it. If they are, watch this. I hope you don't miss this statement tonight. The Lord said to me last night, he said, Nigel, most of the people you know in the church deal with me by experience, not obedience. In other words, if they have experienced something that was, let's say I'm divorced, they'll try to fit me into their reasoning and say, you know what? It's okay for me to leave my wife because after all I did it and God didn't, God didn't kill me, so it's fine. They don't want to obey what he said. What they want to do is say, since I had the experience of divorce, then okay, I'm free to be re remarried because God will forgive me. That's called blatant sinning. That's disrespect for God. I'm speaking to, yes, I'm speaking to those who say they're filled with the Spirit. Those who say they're filled with the Spirit, I'm talking to you.
He said, you have an option here. You could be single and serve me with all of your heart. Or you could get married knowing what, what my policy is for marriage. I do have a question. Jesus said, if you leave your wife for kingdom's sake. Oh, say to me again, my brother. Uh, please ask again, Prophet Le uh, LeBron. Ask me again, please. I'll wait for the question from Prophet LeBron Carter. You can bring the question again for me, please, Prophet. I'll wait for it. Or if somebody saw the question, you can type it. Jesus said, if you leave wife for kingdom's sake or house in no way, would you lose your reward? Exactly. All right? What he's speaking about here is not to divorce the wife. All right? He's not saying you're filled with the spirit, leave your wife and go and divorce her. That, that's fine, my brother. I know the question, but I'm, I'm addressing it. He, what he's saying is this. You have got, some people have got a call on their life. For example, the Lord may say, uh, uh, LeBron, uh, go, go to, to Africa, my son, or go to China, or go to uh, somewhere else and preach the gospel. He's saying like Peter did it. Remember Peter was, was an apostle? Peter was an apostle who was married. And Peter traveled extensively with the Lord. He gets his reward. Peter was never divorced. Some men have taken that literally, my brother, and they say, you know what? I'll divorce you to preach the gospel. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. All right? I'm grateful for the question. Our wives are not supposed to hinder us from doing the work of an apostle or a prophet. That is why it's so important to know who you're getting married to in ministry. All right? Women could do the work, but of course women have got uh, uh, responsibilities of a wife. The scripture says in Titus, you women, older women, teach a young woman to be what? Wives to their husbands and mothers to their children. So a woman's role is different. But her husband could be understanding to say, okay, you go do the work and I'll help you with the children. But don't go doing extensively whereby you leave your children undone. Or go as a family. Our children are homeschooled. Why? Because I have said they will travel with me wherever I go. Therefore, my family is always together with me. All right? God does not make mistakes. If the law says a wife must be there for her husband, that's what he meant. She must be a mother to her children. So if he calls a woman into in the, the prophetic realm, prophesy. Use Periscope. Use the unusual platforms and do the ministry. You don't have to travel all over the world to do it. But ensure that you're not neglecting your children while you're saving the world. We are not supposed to neglect our family to save... I will never neglect my family to save the world. That's correct. So Paul said, if you have no self-control, if you have no self-control, if you have no self-control, then you will get married again. Why? Because... No, I, well, okay. If you have no self control, then you'll rush to be married. But if you have self control, you would not rush to be married. That's a scripture right before our eyes. The only grounds he said you could go get married is if you have no self control, which is a sign that you do not have the fullness of the spirit of Yeshua in you. Paul said to those who are married, I give this charge. To those who are married, I give this charge. Listen to the charge, verse 10. Do not leave your spouse. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. To those who are saved, full of the Holy Ghost, and the two of you are in this position, do not leave your spouse. That's in the Bible. That's in the scripture. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Put it up for me, please. 1 Corinthians 7, 10. To those of you who married, do not leave your spouse. Why? Because you already addressed the flesh issue. Then he's going to talk about the unbeliever and the believer. I'm speaking to two believers here who say they're both full of the Holy Ghost. If both of you are full of the Holy Ghost by your words, you said that you're full, you're not permitted to leave each other. Therefore, therefore, he said, that's it, Brother Steve, not I. 
but the Lord command you. Paul said, this is not my apostolic judgment being used here. This is not my idea being given to you. This is not how I feel as an apostle. This is the Lord telling me to tell you too, who full of the Holy Ghost, you are not permitted to leave each other. You're not permitted. Deb life on this hour. Let's let's bring let's bring let's bring it down, y'all. All right, let's bring it down, y'all. Let us not lose focus here. Let's bring it down so we won't miss the we won't miss the message. Omadeli six or seven nine. Let's bring it down so we won't miss the message. All right. The Lord has said to tell you. The Lord has said to tell you, if two of you are saying that you are full of His Spirit, do not leave each other. Period. 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 But Apostle, what if? What if nothing? If you have said that you are both full of the Holy Ghost, do not leave each other. This is going to be the test now. Because if you insist on leaving, one person insists on leaving, you don't have the Holy Ghost. You're a liar. Bottom line. If you cannot continue, you have no self-control. How do we handle the violence? <laughs> if the person is violent, they have no Holy Ghost. I'm just, I'm just telling you that. I just said it to you again. What if one spouse says they're full of the Holy Ghost? They're hypocritical. Hypocritical, Debbie McDougall. Hypocritical. Abuse, not full of the Holy Ghost. Hypocritical. Bring the questions now. Hypocritical. The law says if two of you are married, and full of the Holy Ghost, one of you is a hypocrite. Because you will never be divorced. So marriage will make you know the fruit. Some of you got married to a form, not a fruit. They put on a good show for you in church. And because you felt the show was good, you got married, but you saw the fruit later. Hypocrite. And if you want to know if your spouse is truthful, you, you decide. You decide tonight, God... I'm going to crucify my flesh and I'm going to pray and fast unto you and seek you. See how quick you see the flesh act up in your spouse. They will show you who they are. They have a form of godliness but no power. Thank you so much. Paul said the Lord, you know what the Lord is? Your owner, your boss. Your owner said you are not to leave. If your spouse becomes violent, leave. Go somewhere else because they're going to hurt you. She's supposed to go away from the environment. I didn't say divorce. I said to leave. Go away from that environment. I'm going to make this very clear in Periscope tonight. Any man or woman who is abusing their spouse does not have the Spirit of God in them. Let me say that first of all. Any, I don't care what you preach. Any person in the church who is abusing their spouse, you do not have Holy Ghost. Therefore, if you are abusive or being abused, you need to go somewhere where you're safe. You need to go where you're safe. But I didn't say go find another husband or wife. That's the point I'm making. If you have been abused, don't go finding somebody else. That's what the Lord said. Let me ask you a question here, please. Is it possible? Is it in any way possible for the Lord to cause the man who abused you to turn around and say, Father, I repent. I was wrong. Forgive me. And he changes. Is it possible? Is that possible? Is it possible for the woman who abused you to say, Lord, forgive me. I, I, have, I have been wrong. Fill me with your spirit. I repent. I was wicked and they confess their fault. Is it possible? So if the person does that, why would you rush to find somebody else? When they come back to you, they really fill with the Holy Ghost now for real. Not, not playing. When they come back to you, you already got another man because you couldn't wait? What kind of spirit is that? I am saying it, I will say it until I go home to glory with my Father in glory. It is impossible for two people to be full of the Holy Ghost and be beating each other up. Impossible. 
If you're full of the Holy Ghost and cussing each other out, you have a church demon. That's what you got. I call it a church demon. Whereby you just have a form, a, a religious spirit all over you. Full of religion. The one who asks about Ezra, Ezra was not a prophet who was full of God's spirit. I'm talking to those who's filled with the spirit. The spirit of the Lord, when he fills people, there is no body who I know from scripture who is full of the spirit and beats their wife and walks away. Not one of them. If you name one tonight, I'll never preach again. Name one disciple, name one prophet who was full of the spirit committing adultery and beating their wife. God told Israel, exactly. God said, Israel, I'm going to send you into persecution because you're adulterous. But I'll still take you back. God says, tell them, I will put you in exile for a while, but I'll take you back though. Read Isaiah 66. He said, I'm going to take you back. I'll take you back. Read Revelation chapter 20. I'll fight for you in the end, but I'll deal with your flesh. It is impossible for two people to be full of the Holy Ghost and be divorced. It is impossible. I didn't say it's difficult. It is impossible for both of you to be genuinely filled with the Holy Ghost and, and, and beat each other up and cuss you out. You are a hypocrite if that's what you did. I don't care. I don't mind what title you have in the church. It is impossible. And if you get divorced and you're full of the Holy Ghost, you will not want to go marrying again. You want to do what God said, which is to preach the gospel or to serve in the kingdom. If you're forced into divorce, uh, ML Lutz, it means your spouse was not filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody was empty. Somebody was empty. Somebody was empty. Somebody was empty. Somebody was lying. That's what I came to tell you to Adam Periscope. That's what I came to tell you. That's what I came to tell you. Adulterous women got put away whom? I don't think people are reading correctly what I said or hearing me carefully. I said two people who are full of the Holy Ghost will not be divorced. God never told Ezra to tell the men put away people who are godly. Serving him in spirit and in truth. Let's read the Bible, please. The Lord is not confused. He told his disciples, you, in Matthew 5, you've heard it said that if a woman commits adultery, you could put away your wife. He said, but to you I say, I'm talking to those of you who say you have Holy Ghost, but to you I say, but to you I say, who say you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, you are not to put away your spouse if both of you have him. But to you I say, Matthew 5, he said, you've heard it said, but to you, I say, full of the Holy Ghost, you. Now, let me clarify this and get off this Periscope broadcast. Yeshua, when he spoke to his disciples about marriage, they were not full of the Holy Ghost. Now, this is deep stuff right here. When he told his disciples, when, Peter, when the disciples says, Lord, this is a hard thing in Matthew 19, they were not baptized in the Holy Ghost. So it was hard for them to receive it. But when Peter became full of the Holy Ghost, Peter said, Husbands, deal with your wife properly. What changes language? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. When, Holy Go when the Holy Spirit takes you over, your language changes. Your behavior changes. The same disciple who said, Lord, this is a hard saying. Oh my God. Ooh. The same ones who said, Lord, it's a hard saying. They didn't have him. But when he said, go to the upper room and wait for the promise. You wait there for the promise. You shall be filled with power. Oh my God. Ha! Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm about to run wrong this room. You shall be filled with power. After the Holy Ghost comes on you, Peter said, husbands, deal with your wife correctly. Peter didn't say, if you don't like what she did, leave her. Peter said, deal with her right. Paul, full of the Holy Ghost, said, don't leave. And if you leave, stay as you are. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, he makes what was difficult easy. Oh my God, help me Holy Ghost. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, the helper, 
comes along and says, you think it was hard because you weren't full. But I'm with you now. I'm with you now and you shall walk this life with me. I, he I hear you, Holy Ghost. When you have me inside of you, what was difficult becomes easy. You could walk this road now because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take it and learn of me. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, you want to do what pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. You follow the Holy Ghost. I won't get married as soon as your husband goes away. You don't have any Holy Ghost. You got a babbling spirit called tongues. Baba, baba, baba. That's Babel spirit. Babbling. No tongues. Babbling. If we're full of the Holy Ghost for real, we will never, never rush to find somebody else. Go to the other woman. I hope he hears Angela Green. He may hear it. You never know. God is God. It's amazing now. God may lead him to hear this. When you have the Holy Ghost, that's right. Holy Spirit will say, okay then, you feel, you, you feel pressure? Remember what I told you. The fruit of my spirit is, oh, glory to God. Holy Ghost, when he takes over this vessel, you have ease to serve God. Because he helps you. He guides you. He leads you into all truth. All, all. I will never respect any apostle who tells me he's full of the spirit, but has to divorce his wife to find somebody else. You are, I disrespect you because you're a liar. I don't believe you. I'll never believe you and no prophet could tell me. Now that I'm speaking to you, you're a prophet of God and you're full of the spirit. You're married and go and find somebody else right away. Uh-uh. That's it, Prophet LeBron. They don't have the Holy Ghost. They don't have him. They have church. They've been trained into thinking that when I get emotional and I say, ba 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 that's God, that's not God. That's not God. Ikotobo, that's not God. The fruit of the Spirit, that's God. Show me your fruit, not your tongue. Show me your fruit, not your tongue. I'm not going to be deceived by any tongue talker. Show me your fruit. Bless you, bless you, uh, uh, Fatima. Show me your fruit. That's it. Show me your... tongues. Tongues don't move me in church because I don't know what you said. I don't know what you're saying, but you speak to me in English. Talking in tongues and cussing in English. Talking in tongues and cussing in English. You're a hypocrite. Let me say it to you again. Talking in tongues and cussing in English. You are a hypocrite. You got a holy guess, not a holy ghost. Split tongue, that's a snake. Help me tonight, Lord, to preach this message. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he shall give you power. Do the mess will come upon you. Don't pray with me tonight. You could never have the Holy Ghost. Two, a couple, could never have him. And talking to me about divorce, I will never listen to you. Never. The Lord God Almighty tell me to tell you tonight, if you have a spirit for real, show it. If you have a spirit for real, show it. That's it, prophet. God will possess you. I pray tonight for my sister. I told you I'll pray for you, Fatima. I think it is the name, Muhammad. I pray for you. I pray God gives you the strength and the grace to understand the deep things of the Lord, to give you patience to know that he is with you always. Those of you wise on this broadcast, I pray that you'll have the strength in the Lord. Those who are struggling in your marriage now, this message will bring you life and bring you light. You shall stand like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You shall bring forth fruit in your season. Your leaves shall not wither. You shall not perish in the desert. You shall be a fruitful tree. Your children are holy because you remain different. You shall be holy. You are righteous, said the Lord. He's imputed his righteousness to you. Walk in it by faith. And stand. Fatima Muhammad, the Lord is with you. I pray conversion for your whole family. 
I pray God uses you as an evangelist in your home to, to tell the good news. To tell the good news. Deliverance, I pray for my that side. I pray for your husband tonight. Every husband who has walked away from his house, your wife is on here. Every husband who's walked away and your wife is on this broadcast tonight. I pray that Yeshua Almighty will send his Holy Spirit. I ask of you, Lord, please let the Holy Ghost convict them of sin, of righteousness and judgment. Jeff, I pray for you. I pray in the name of Yeshua that he'll convict them of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Tell them that it's coming, Lord. Let my sisters be at peace. Let my sister be at peace. Fatima, your whole family. I pray your whole family. Your whole family, your entire, your, whoever your family is, I pray that God will give you the grace to present his power and show them the message of salvation. Wherever you live, fear not, for he's with you. Don't be afraid of marriage, but don't play with it. Don't play with it. Do not play with marriage. If you're single on this broadcast tonight or watching by YouTube or Facebook, don't play. Do not listen to these crazy people who tell you, but marriage is easy, just get into it, it'll be alright, have sex all you want. Do not play with this. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Wives, it is safe to serve the Lord. Husbands, it is safe to serve the Lord. Confess your fault if you have it. Confess your fault if you have it. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. If you did it, and it's the first time you're hearing this broadcast, stay as you are. Don't leave the, the wife you marry now to try to go back to the first one. That's confusion. Stay as you are. But don't come telling me next you have another wife to go to. That's right. Sex doesn't hold any marriage together. I bless you. I bless you. I thank you all so much for your time. Thank you for sharing this with other people. All right? I thank you. Now, remember, on Friday night, God willing, on Friday night, same time at 9 o'clock, I'll be on for us to talk again. On Friday at 9 o'clock, save it. If you haven't added me, please do so. Or, or if you're led to do so, let us talk some more about this because we need to hear the mind of God about this here. And don't play games with people's lives. I love all of you. I bless the Lord for you. And I thank you so much for being here. All right? Girlfriend, our pain is being productive. All right? No, that's fine, Deb Life. That's all right. I love you, Deb Life. Thank you. God bless you. All right? We could go up or we could come down. It's all right. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. As long as you, could, you can control yourself, you're good. All right? Blessings on you. Bless you. Let's remember Friday. Came from Seattle. Blessings on you. Good to see you. All right? I love you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause you to be strong. Core Ministries International, stay strong in the Lord. All right? Bless you. Born again, Christian. Wonderful. You're my, you're my, 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 uh, my co-liberal then. Brethren in the Lord. Love y'all. Noella, blessings on you. Love you, love you, love you. Goodbye and God bless you. All right? See you on Friday at 9 o'clock. Don't forget, let's make that date and keep it. Love y'all. Bye. Blessings. Thank you so much, Angelic Green. I'm praying for you. It is well. It is well. God will give you the grace to stand. Blessings. Blessings. Bless you, Nell. Love you. Love you. Blessings on y'all. Bye, Laureen. Bye. Love y'all. Bye, Debbie. Love you. Blessings, Sister Babs. Pastor Bab. Bless you, evangelist. Bye now. I'm out. Blessings. Miss Kojic, bless you. Bye.